Okay, so the reason I'm putting up this video um, is A, to give you another example of how distributions can look, how a variable is distributed along a numeric scale, um, and also because if you recall, I believe in both of my classes uh, this previous Thursday, there was a lot of uh, struggle that it, Microsoft Excel was giving me. It forced me to use the old version of how to make a histogram, uh, that the steps of which are in the, uh, the best practices slides that you should all have. Um, and I was getting frustrated because I know that there's, uh, a, now there's a built-in way where making a histogram is one click in Excel. Um, and it wasn't on the computers that were in the classrooms. I believe it's on the computers in the library and in the computer labs uh, where histograms are now a default chart type for variables in Excel. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that here so that we can get uh, two real-world examples and also you can see how to do it in a much faster, easier, and more comprehensive way. So what I have here is I have uh, United States Census data <clears throat> where respondents um, were asked questions. I think every, this is a, a yearly study they do. They take a sample of uh, citizens of the United States and they ask them a bunch of things. But I've pulled out to look at uh, the serial number just tells me what the person's ID was, is the, peop the person's age and how much they make in a year, how much they made during that last year. And they're corresponding. So I have this person made, uh, this person's 51 years old. They made $63,000 last year. Okay, this person is 85 years old. They made $322,000 last year. Okay, and on and on and on. Um, and this column here, I just took the income and divided it by 1,000 so that when we start making axes, it makes it look uh, much cleaner. So 63,000 is 63 in this column, and then that rounded it out to zero decimal places. Okay, so get age. I'm going to look at it. I click the, if you click the letter on the column, it highlights the whole column, the whole variable, age. And then I go to insert. And then now, if you look under charts, there's this little graph that looks like a histogram, all the same color, and that's called the statistics chart group. This is what I was looking for in class uh, on Thursday, and it wasn't updated. So here it is, histogram is now a default chart type, and boom. Just like that, histogram gets made for me. And now I have the distribution of the ages of all of these people, grouped into bins, into buckets, right? The ranges of their ages. So by default, Excel kind of picks some numbers for me. So between people who are between 15 and 18.8 .8 years old, uh, which obviously doesn't make any sense because these are all rounded to no decimal places. So Excel picks those for me. So to change them, click on the axis, right click, format, and now I have options for the bins. So uh, I already know how I want this to look. Let's say I want to see how ages look, uh, if I, or how the age distribution looks if I group everything into a range of five. So five years, 15 to 20, 20 to 25, 25 to 30, and so on. And that's how that would look. So Excel automatically fixes it for me. So now I have all the people that responded who are between 15 years old and 20 years old. They responded here, and those are their frequencies. If I add data labels, I can see that 124 people are between 15 and 20 years old in this data. Between 20 and 25, there were 170 people who were that old. 268 people between 25 and 30, and so on and so on. And that's how they, um, that's how they reported their age. And now I have a distribution of their ages, right? And this is an approximately bell-shaped distribution. It's kind of wide and flat, but you can see that it comes up sort of in a smooth curve way, and then it tapers off down here, sort of like a bell would look. Okay, so this is a distribution, distribution of respondents' ages. Okay, and I'm not going to spend all the time formatting this chart and making the, the best practices thing that you can find um, in those slides on Blackboard. I advise you to do that, but I just want to demonstrate how you can construct a histogram in Excel uh, with this one-click option. Um, if you have Microsoft Office that you Microsoft Office, excuse me, that you downloaded from the school, um, you should be able to uh, have that function here because they they released the most recent version. Um, which I believe is a free download for all students. I advise you to take advantage of it. Um, charts, statistical charts. Okay. Now, as another example, let's look at their income distributions. Okay. Or the distribution of their incomes, excuse me. So again, I'm going to use the rounded column so that these axis numbers are, you know, tighter packed. I'm going to go to insert, charts, statistic chart, histogram. Boom. Easy. Done. I don't have to type out uh, the bins that I want ahead of time and wait 10 minutes for it to run and while it's thinking. I don't have to do any of that. And it gives me a distribution for their incomes, 
right? So distribution of respondents incomes. Okay, and I can add data labels if I want to make sure that I can see exactly, and that's kind of ugly, but we'll clean that up in a second, exactly how this will look, right? So again, Excel gave me some default numbers. I don't want these because there's way too many bins. I don't care. I don't want to see all these different groupings, right? So format axis, bin width. Let's say I want to see uh, people grouped into 20, like into income brackets of $25,000, okay? So 25, because again, I've divided the income by 1,000. And now I have it grouped. So 1,976 people uh, earn between zero and $25,000 a year. 1,271 or between 25 and 50,000 dollars a year and so on and so on and you can see that this is a right skewed distribution right it peaks over here on the left and then as we go up the income brackets less and less people uh, respond that way and so you can see that this is a right skewed distribution okay now you look at this and this is a helpful feature in the way that Excel handles uh, histograms now. And you can see that I have all these bins. You can't, there's, the counts are so small, the frequencies are so small that you can't even see the bars, right? We have, we go all the way down to zero, two, two, zero, three, one. I don't care about all these individual bins, right? It'd be nice if I could just group them into one bin, one bin that said more than some number, right? And you can do that in this uh, newer version of Excel. It's called the overflow bin. And let's say I want the cutoff to be, I don't know, 250, $250,000, okay? And now it's still a right skewed distribution. It's very clear to see that, but I've taken away all those extra bins that I don't want to see one, two respondents for, and they're all grouped under anybody earning over $250,000 a year. There's 77 of them, okay? So again, this wasn't a, this wasn't a best practices exercise. This wasn't a... You know, there's no, this isn't a homework assignment or anything, but I wanted to show you that uh, the reason that, there, that I was struggling, I think, to explain uh, the histogram process to you in class in Excel is because uh, those are outdated versions. You have to do histogram production the long way. In new versions of Excel, Excel will do this stuff for you. Uh, it's an automatic chart, and you can just sort of change the bin widths and the formatting and the data labels, and you can see... Um, how that changes everything. So I encourage you to maybe download some data from uh, the World Bank or from Yahoo Finance and maybe play with this. Play with the, the histogram function, look at the distributions of your data, and uh, sort of get the feel for how this works. Okay? Any questions, just let me know.